let's proceed to the third lesson. And this is rush modeling. Ano ba itong rush modeling na ating tinatawag? Uh, isa sa mga readings ninyo ito. Uh, usually, ang pagsusukat natin, we use a linear measurement. Uh, like for example, sa pagsukat ng height ng flower, gumagamit tayo ng meter stick okay, to make linear measures. And then, we compare the height of the three flowers based on that graduations that we made. Like for example, yung flower A is 12 centimeter, tapos yung flower B is 9 centimeters, tapos yung flower C ay 6 centimeters. So, compare natin yung tatlo, kung sino yung pinaka uh, tall, the tallest of them all, tapos yung pinaka shortest no, of them all. At compare yun naman yung ating usual yung ginagawa no, sa klase. Like for example, kinoconsider natin itong mga flower na ito na score ng ating mga students sa test. So, na-arrange natin siya sino may pinakamataas na score at sino yung may pinakamaliit na score. And, of course, base yun sa same variable. Now, let's take a look at this uh, illustration. Galing rin ito doon sa journal, yung rush analysis, where, when, and how. This is an example of a test, uh, results of a test or an examination. The raw test scores of four ninth grade students who completed the same 25-item test. Ang story sa likod ng mga score na ito is that 20 items were appropriate for ninth grade students. Pero may limang items na pang college ang level. So kung ating titingnan, base lang sa score ha, si Elizabeth ang pinakamatalino kasi 24 yung kanyang score. Sunod si Henry, 19. Sunod si Pete, 10. And then si Johnny, 5 lang. So, sa unang tingin siguro, sabi na, oh, Johnny is, uh, is not really that smart. Kasi ang baba ng kanyang score. Pero in uh, further examination, nakita natin na actually, si Johnny lang yung nakasagot ng mga items na pang college ang level. So, tama ba yung ating evaluation na si Johnny yung pinakamahina sa klase where in, in fact, lahat ng mga items na pang college siya ang nakasagot? Okay. So, ayan yung mga questions na ina-address ng ating rush uh, model. Now, here's another example of a survey rating scale. So, pag sinabi nating uh, rating scale, ang automatic na pumapasok sa atin ay mga Likert scale uh, items. Like, for example, we have uh, three questions here that are Likert type. Question 5, uh, question 8, at saka question 10. So, kung ating nakikita, sa question 5, the jump between each of the ratings is equal. Ibig sabihin, yung degree ng pakiramdam ng respondent sa pagsagot ay parang pare-pareho yung distansya ng strongly agree sa agree sa disagree at saka sa strongly disagree. Whereas, for uh, question number 8 and question number 10, the jump from each rating to the next rating is not equal. Why? Because if we take a look, a look at this, uh, masyadong malayo yung distansya ni agree sa disagree. May mga ganun talaga tayong mga, ano, may mga ganun talaga tayong mga items na nasa salubong. Yung isang example nga dyan, yung sabi, naliligo ako araw-araw. Madali lang yan sagutin, no? Strongly agree, agree, disagree, at saka strongly disagree. Pero yung tingnanong mo sa, siya na, naliligo ako araw-araw kahit malamig na malamig ang panahon, medyo mahirap yung sagutin. Kaya hindi magiging even yung spacing or jump from option to option. And then, nakita natin yung question number 10. Still, the jump from strongly agree I don't know. The jump from agree to disagree is not equal to S, A, and A, and D, and S, D. Masyadong narrow yung jump between A and D. So, furthermore, uh, the way the rating scale functions across the items is not identical. Tapos, isasummarize mo siya as a whole rating scale, where in fact, the jump of the agreement of the respondents in different items are uh, also differ. So, may problema tayo dito. So, ang pwede lang i-assert ng researcher dito is that the rating scale is ordinal for each item. But the gap between them, that is a problem. So, let's review Stevens' scale or level of measurement. That the lowest of this level is so-called the nominal level, which is used as a category 
category lang for categorical uh, purposes just to categorize now the respondents and that's the lowest form of measurement because you cannot do higher analysis now with these measures and then we have the ordinal the next one so it could be uh, any any variable that has uh, a reason for you to arrange it uh, in descending or in ascending order and Likert is one kasi pwede mo siyang i-arrange from highest to lowest, vice versa. And usually sa mga rating scales natin ngayon, we actually use codes for agree, strongly agree, disagree, and then strongly disagree like 4321, 12345. So, and then ina-add natin itong mga scores na to. But the problem is, yun nga, yung, yung distansya ng mga agreements kapag uh, titingnan na natin. So, there's a question of that. Kasi pag sinabi natin ordinal yung item, we actually neglect or we ignore the distance between uh, two measures. Like for example, sa, sa klase natin, uh, nung nag-exam tayo, may nakakuha ng 100, may nakakuha ng 99. Tapos may na, yung, yung ikatherd natin, parang ang score parang 93. So ang layo, di ba? So 199 tapos 93. Pero kapag nirank mo siya, yung 100 ay 1. Yung 99 ay 2. Tapos, yung 93 ay 3. So, nawala yung distance between 99 at saka 93, which is almost about 7. Nung nirank mo na siya, 1, 2, 3 na lang. So, hindi yun maayos kasi marami kang mga data na nawala. So, this is where the rush model enters. So, yung rush measurement natin ay ganito. Uh, in order to measure an analyst must consider the following if you are going to do the rush measure. Actually, it's called rush because of the one who proposed this, uh, George Rush. You are going to consider a single construct, which is represented by the vertical line, whatever that construct is. So, ang tawag natin dun sa mga latent variables, yung mga variables that cannot be directly observed, ang kanyang antonym ay yung manifest variable dun sa, sa ating structural equation modeling na you can directly observe it. Like, for example, height. Nasusukat mo eh, yung weight. These are manifest variables. Pero kapag sinabi mong a latent variable, so these are constructs that cannot easily be measured. Like, for example, kindness, religiosity. So, kailangan ito mayroong mga item indicators. So, yan yung ating construct na measure At dapat yung ating mga indicators should fit into the construct. So, the second one that uh, you have to consider is that the parts of the variable marked by different test items. Yun na yun, yung mga item indicators. Number three, understand that a test taker will be located at some point along the variable. Right. Kasi for example, if you are measuring kindness, so, maraming makikita tayong mga test taker that really shows or manifests the characteristics or the indicators of being kind and not so being kind and being rude at all. And number four, understand that the probability of a respondent answering a test item correctly can be expressed. So, ayun. Ano yung probability na masagot niya yung uh, item ng tama or mali? Now, uh, let me introduce to you to a concept called the logit. Uh, the logit is the natural logarithmic scale of the odd ratio. Ano ba yung odd ratio na ating tinatawag? This is the ratio of the number of undesired events or Q to the number of the desired events or P. So that's why we have Q over P. That is the odd ratio. For example, what is the odd ratio if the pass rate of an item is 4 out of 5 candidates? Ibig sabihin, Yung item 1, for example, apat ang nakatama over 5 who attempted the item. So, what is the undesired? Yung undesired ay yung isa over 5. So, that's 1 fifth. And 1 fifth in decimal is 0.2 over the desired events. The desired events is 4 over 5. So, what is 4 over 5 in decimal? So, that's 0.8. So, what is 0.2 over 0.8? Ano sabi ng calculator nyo? So, that is 0.25. That is the odds. 
And then, we're going to get the logit of that. So, the logit is the natural logarithmic scale of the odd ratio. We're going to convert point, uh, 25 into a logarithmic scale. So, paano ba natin yun gagawin? Sa Excel lang yun. So, we have log and then the odds. The odds is point 0.25. So, that's it. It's negative 0.6. That is the logit value. Negative 0.6. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, yung pinaka-purpose kasi ng logit, ang gusto niyang gawin ay equally spaced niya yung mga measures. From a raw score with uh, unequal spacing, gusto niyang i-transmute or i-convert ito into uh, a scale with equal spacing. At ginagawa ito sa pamamagitan ng pag-convert ng mga odds uh, ratio or ng mga odds into a logarithmic scale. Uh, let's take a look at the first column. This is the original value like 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, at saka 50. And then, let's take a look at the distance between the two original values. Like for example, the distance between 1 and 2 is 2 minus 1, so the spacing is 1. Dito naman, 5 minus 2, the spacing is 3. 10 minus 5, the spacing is 5. Uh, 20 minus 10, the spacing is 10. And 50 minus 20, the spacing is 30. Is there any other way so that this unequal spacing can be transmuted into a certain scale that establishes equal spacing? Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, use your calculator here. Log 1 is what? 0. Because this is a natural logarithm, this is uh, on the base 10. Log 2 is 0 0.30103. Log 5 is 0 0.69897. Uh, nilagay natin yung ganung kahaba na numbers because we want to establish equal spacing. And then log 10 is 1. So tandaan nyo, log 10 is 1. Okay. And then 20 Lag 20 is 1.30103 and lag 50 is 1.69897. Pakitry sa calculator nyo. Lag 100. Ano? Ang sagot. So that is 2. Lag 1000. So that is 3. Ibig sabihin ng lag 1 is ibig sabihin ng 1 na logarithm value is 10 raised to 1. Yung lag 2 is 10 raised to 2. Tapos yung log 3 is raise 10 raised to 3 kasi 10 times 10 times 10, 1,000 yun eh, and so on and so forth. Now, let's take a look at the distances between these two. So, from point 0.30103 to 0, the distance or the difference or the interval is point or the space is point 0.30103. Okay. 0.69897 minus this one, it's point 0.39794. 1 minus this one is 0 0.30103. 1.30 0 .30 minus 1 is 0 0.30103. 1.69897 6 minus this one is 0.39794. So if you're going to take a look at this, there, there is an equal, uh, almost no equal spacing. Alalo na dito, it seems like uh, there, there, there is normality. Kaya kapag transmit nyo, this is the... Uh, this is actually the purpose of the rush model to convert an unequally spaced raw score like an ordinal data into a, an interval data where the scales are of equal spacing. Now let's discuss about uh, the rush model. Uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, the rush model can be used to estimate the difficulty of the item the ability of the person and the precision. When there is less error, so the, the item or the person is very precise. Kapag masyado namang maraming error, ibig sabihin hindi precise or reliable yung person. So tingnan natin, both the items, ano yung item? Circle daw. Yung nakikita natin circle dyan, yung ang mga nakalagay ay mga letters. And the persons are located on the same map. So we consider this as a map. And then the logit scale, ito yung sa gitna, the logit scale is an interval scale because it's equally spaced. 
in which all the logit units are of the same size. So yung logit unit natin is the log of the odds. And it's the natural log of the odds. So you have negative 4.0 here, negative 3.0, negative 2.0, negative 1.0. It sounds like the theta in the item response theory. And the mean of that is 0. And then you climb up again to positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, and positive 4. Now, the highest values are located at the top of the map. So yung mga values na positive 4, positive 3, positive 2, positive 1, they are found at the top of the map, and the lowest values are located at the bottom. So, now let us estimate the person and the item. Each item and person is located along the logit scale according to estimated value. So, na estimate na natin yung value nitong item natin at saka itong ating uh, person. More positive persons are more able. Kapag yung mga square na yan ay nasa positive na side ng ating map, ibig sabihin, they are more able. And more positive items are more difficult. So yung mga items na nasa taas ng zero, they are more difficult items as compared to this one. So yung mga sa baba, ibig sabihin, yan yung mga tao na hindi masyadong magaling. Yan yung mga items naman na hindi masyadong mahirap. So, ibig sabihin, madali. The measurement error of the item is indicated by the size of the symbol. Kapag yung uh, larger symbols indicate greater errors in logic. So, kapag malalaki yung mga symbols, ibig sabihin, hindi yan uh, precise kasi masyadong mataas ang error. And then, estimated values are read vertically only on the logit scale for both estimates and errors. So what do we estimate here? The difficulty and the ability. And what is the error? It's all about the precision. So lahat ng yun, dapat basahin ng vertically. If you are looking at the proficiency or the ability of the person, you have to look at this scale or the logic scale. Kapag zero pataas, ibig sabihin, uh, Mataas ang ability, mahirap ang item. Okay. Sa person, mataas ang ability. Sa item, mahirap ang item. Kapag zero pa baba, ibig sabihin ang ability ay mababa, tapos ang item ay madali. Okay. Now, how about the fitness or the quality control? Because there are some items and some persons that do not fit the model. Uh, natatandaan ninyo, nag-develop tayo ng model by considering the tentative item difficulty and the tentative uh, student proficiency. So, sa quality control, items and persons that fit the model are located in the white zone. This is the white zone. So, ibig sabihin, ang mga nakapaloob dito, these are the only items and persons that fit the model. So, items and persons that do not fit the model are located in the shaded zone. So, ito, sino ito? They are misfits. Sa madaling salita, ang misfits, ito yung mga outliers. So, si Betty, medyo kakaiba siya. Yung item W at saka yung item V, ma magkaiba siya. And then, fit values are read horizontal only on a standardized T scale. Uh, yung T, it's like the Z value wherein uh, the raw score is multiplied to the mean divided by the standard deviation. So, kagaya niyan, yung ating T is positive 2 at saka negative 2. Beyond that, they are considered misfits already. Nasa labas na siya. Hindi na siya uh, nasa loob ng uh, fitness. Hindi na siya fit sa model. Yung cut-off natin ay uh, positive 2 at saka negative 2. So, acceptable values uh, fall between negative 2 and positive 2 with sample sizes between 30 and 300. So now, let's have some exercises. So, tingin muna tayo sa items. So ibig sabihin, kapag items ang tanong, ang titingnan ay ano? Square or circle? Correct. Circle. So let's have the first question. Is item S, saan si S? Ito, more difficult or much less difficult than item N? Saan si N? Ito. Ang sagot nyo? Correct it is more difficult. Why? Because it is found on a positive one-something logit. 
mas mataas yung logit value niya as compared to n na it is around negative 1 point something. Nakuha nyo? Next. Still on items. Which item is the most likely to be failed by the students? Correct. Okay. It's item U because no other student goes above item U. That means that item U is smarter than the rest of the students. Next, which item is the most likely to be passed by the students? Correct, it's item L because many of the students are above L. That means that many of the students are uh, smarter than item L. Now, on persons. So, when we talk about persons, we we'll look at the squares. So, question. Is Bill much more able? Where's Bill? This one. Or much less able than Bob? Correct. Bill is much more able because it has a logit value of higher than, point, uh, higher than positive 2.0 than Bob which is less than positive 1. Next question. Which student is revealed as least able on this test? So based on this test, which student is the least able? You are right. It is Mike. Because among the students, Mike has the lowest logit value. Next. Is Bill likely to have answered item U correctly? This is Bill. Okay. No. Why? Because item U is smarter than Bill. Next. What will be more uh, unexpected? That Bill will miss item S or item M? Item S or item M? Okay. You are right. It's item S. Why? Because it's a more difficult item as compared to M. Next, Mike scored 1 on the test. Which item is most likely to, the one, to be the one he got right? Where's Mike? This one. And he got only one score. Ano kaya yung item na nasagot niya? You are right. It's item L. So, another question. Which items are not usefully located on the pathway in their present forms? This is the pathway, and which items are out of the way? It's item W and item V. Next, which person is traveling to the beat of the different drum? So almost all persons are on the pathway, but one person is going away. So it's Betty. So something, something, something is wrong with Betty. Next, is Bob's ability well measured by this test? Bob's ability. Yes or no? Yes, because Bob fits into the model. Next, Jill scored 3 on the test. Where's Jill? This one. So which items did she most likely answer correctly? So most likely, it's N, M, and L. Could it be V also? Possibly. Kaya lang, yung N, M, at L, yung pinaka most likely. Dun sa lahat. Okay. So, this is the guide in interpreting uh, the, the pathway no, of the Rush model. Uh, yung sa gitna, that is actually the logit scale. And the logit scale range from negative 4 to positive 4. Uh, ang ibig sabihin, yung mga negative na logit values, they are uh, easy or easy to endorse the mga items. And in terms of ability, they are the person with low ability on underdeveloped ability. Yung from the negative logit values. Sa mga positive val uh, logit values naman, sila naman yung mga, ang value ay from zero above. So what does that mean in terms of item difficulty? These are hard or difficult to endorse. Hard items or items that are difficult to endorse when it is a Likert scale. 
And when it comes to person ability, they are high or developed persons. And when it comes to the fitness of the data, so ito, from positive, from negative 2 to positive 2, that means that when the information, when the data, when the person are inside, so that inside a pathway or in the white space, the data fits the model's expectation uh, from uh, negative 2 to positive 2. And yung mga na dito sa mga uh, gray uh, spaces, they are misfit, misfitting data or the outliers. Uh, based on the example that I gave earlier about Bell, about Betty, Bill, Bob, Jane, Jack, Jill, and Mike, uh, ito yung ersatz, bagong, bagong term itong ersatz, which means uh, an artificial person statistics for the pathway in figure 3.1. So it's like uh, a made-up person statistics. So tingnan natin dito yung kanilang ability estimate. It is already arranged now from the highest to the lowest ability. So, makikita natin dyan na uh, from visual inspection alone that Mike is uh, the most underdeveloped among the students because the logit value is negative 2.4 and Bill is the uh, most proficient. Whereas, yung pinakamalapit sa average na zero ay si Gene. When it comes to the error of estimate, uh, Mike, Mike is uh, uh, the, 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 the least... Uh, precise because of that particular error of estimate. Now, when it comes to the fitness of the estimate as T, yung ating uh, criterion dito is that it fits the item or the person fits if the T value is from negative to positive 2. So, si Betty nga. So, Betty does not fit the model. So, tanggalin natin si Betty. Uh, this is again the ersatz item statistics for the pathway in figure 3.1. So yung nauna person statistics, this one is the item statistics. So from item uh, designated by letters, UTS, RW, QPO, VN, M, L. Okay. So as to the difficulty estimate, it has already been arranged. So that is... Uh, U is the most difficult item with a logit value of 3.0 and L is the uh, easiest item with negative 2.5 logit value and uh, the one that is closest to the average item difficulty is uh, item P which is 0.2 as to the one with uh, greater error of estimate it's letter U and letter L kaya malalaki yung uh, radius ng circle ng letter U at saka letter L. But when it comes to fit estimate, they have misfits. Yes, we have W and then we have W kasi siya ay negative 2.6 and then we have V kasi siya ay positive 2.4. So, these items, we do not immediately, because they do not fit the model, we do not immediately discard them but instead, we look back at them and then examine baka may problema tayo sa ating kito correction, nagkamali tayo, or baka mamaya mm, something is wrong with the way uh, our question is being phrased. And many more. While this one is the item person map, or the so-called right map, W-R-I-G-H-T, this one. So kung ating titingnan, uh, we have here the zero logit. And we can consider this as the mean, no? the zero one, the zero logit is the mean uh, of the person. And this one is the person uh, map, and this one is the item map. And if we're going to take a look at this one, itong part na to ng mga tao, they are uh, smarter than these items. Okay. While this part of the items, they are smarter than these persons. So... Ano yung sinasabi nitong ating right map? Parang sinasabi niya na uh, mas marami yung mga tao or mga examiners that can answer a lot of items. Tapos, konti lang yung mga items na uh, hindi masagot nitong nasa mga may hinang, may hinang grupo ng mga estudyante. 
So that is the item person map or the right map. This is another way of representing the right map. Uh, this is the logit scale from dito negative 2 to positive 2. And these are the item placement across the logit scale. And then the person also. So nandyan ilang tao yung nakasagot ng pinakamahirap na item. So kung ating titingnan dito may 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Pero sa iba yan, sinasabi nila na minsan dalawa yung tao na yan. Uh, kaya titingnan natin yung ano, titingnan natin yung uh, legend. So ibig sabihin may magaling na ano, may may anim na magagaling na mga estudyante kaysa sa item number 30. Uh, what is good about this right map is that parang yung bawat tao at different logit scale has a corresponding item no, that match them. Except siguro yung ano, negative 0.25, negative 0.5 na walang item no, na nakaharap sa kanila. At saka yung negative 1.25. So, ayan. Okay, punta tayo sa fitness. Uh, kasi ang gusto natin dito ay Sa, sa rush model, we want to fit the data into the model. That's why we have to edit the data, uh, whether we remove the outliers or we want to calibrate no, the items and we want to uh, study the person whether we're going to include them in our model or not. Mm, misfit, uh, is, or misfits are actually, technically, they are called the outliers. It is an observation that cannot fit into the overall structure of the exam. So, it could either be uh, an item or a person. Sa classical test theory, it is detected by the point by serial correlation. While in IRT, it is detected by the misfit indices. Uh, these are the different indices. The in-MSQ, in-ZSTD, out-MSQ, and then the out-ZSTD. So, what are these? Okay. These are the different misfit indices. Uh, the first one is the indices for the model fit, if the data fit the model. So this determines whether the model fit is good or bad. And we have the in-fit standardized residual or the in-ZSTD, wherein the residual means the discrepancy between the predicted position and the actual data point position. Because we are fitting the data into the model, so we have to check whether the predicted value uh, mirrors or is reflective of the uh, actual value. If there's no difference between the two, that's good because the data fits the model. But if there is a discrepancy, uh, that, that is the thing that we have to consider. That's why mayroon tayong tinatawag na mga cut-off points to consider whether it's already a misfit or not. Ganon din, uh, kinoconsider natin na bad yung fitness kapag yung value niya ay mag-exceed sa uh, doon naman sa outfit standardized residual, it's the same thing. Tinitingnan natin yung, uh, tinitingnan natin yung uh, index na yan. Kapag yan ay uh, lumagpas sa 2, ibig sabihin the, 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 the model fit is bad. And sometimes it needs a visual inspection like this one. In the in-fit standardized residual, may mga values tayo na nawawala. I mean, it's an outlier. So, pwede natin siyang tanggalin. Okay. Sa outfit naman na standardized residual, meron ulit dyan. So, sometimes we need to uh, plot the different uh, residuals. Yung mga natira. Yung discrepancy between the predicted position and the actual data position. The other uh, misfit index is the item fit. Uh, to spot the misfit items. And this is measured by the infit mean squared and the outfit mean squared. The infit mean squared is the chi-square divided by the degree of freedom with weighting. And this is actually the ratio between the observed and the predicted variance. So parang residual din siya. So yung variance ba na, na predict mo, ay yun rin ba yung actual na variance? Pag ganun, so there is no difference. It's a perfect, it's a perfect fit. While uh, the outfit mean squared, this is chi-square divided by the degree of freedom without weighting. Like for example, what does an infit mean squared of 1 mean? So that means that the, uh, the, the amount of variance is 
is the same no, between the uh, observed and the predicted. While sa 1.3, uh, the amount of variance is 1.3 times uh, larger than what is uh, expected. Uh, okay, sometimes in, 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 in determining uh, whether we're going to, uh, whether it's a misfit or not, we, pwede nating tingnan yung mga map ng ating mga uh, mean squared. At kapag may nakita tayong mga, yan, mga extra-extra doon sa labas, which does not fit the uh, observed data no, in the model, no, tinatanggal natin yan para maganda yung ating model. Hindi siya maingay. Mm, here, we have the uh, table showing all expected counts and all actual counts. In one item, for example, uh, mayroon tayong count ng nakasagot ng tama at count ng mga hindi nakasagot ng tama. And then, this is now the data or yung ability. Uh, ilan sa mga magagaling ang nakasagot ng tama? Ilan sa mga average ang nakasagot ng tama? At ilan sa mga hindi masyadong uh, skilled ang nakasagot ng tama? So, ito yung mga walang parenthesis, yan yung mga ano, yan yung mga uh, observed. Tapos, yung mga nakaparenthesis, yan yung expected. Uh, paano siya nakuha? Uh, paano makuha? Ito yung observed 10. Pero ang expected natin ay 9. So, there's a difference of 1. Observed minus expected. Pero paano nakuha ang 9? So, we look at the marginal values or frequencies. This is the marginal frequency of the row and this is the marginal frequency of the total. So, ang ginagawa lang natin, we multiply the marginal frequency of more skilled and then the marginal frequency of answer correctly just to get this intersection divided by the total of 50. So, it's like 15 times 30 divided by 50, so that gives you 9. O, paano naman ito? So, that's it. 15 times 30 divided by 50, that gives you 9. Ay, ito. 20 times 30 divided by 50, that gives you 12. That's the expected frequency. Ay, ito. Itong 6. So, that's 15 times 20 divided by 50, so that's 6. 15 times 20 divided by 50, that is 6. And then, 20 times 20 divided by 50, that is 8. And now, how are we going to get the variance? So, to get the variance, ito na yun, uh, observed is 10 minus expected, which is 9, is equal to 1. And then, you get the square. Square of 1, and then, you divide it by the expected, which is 9. So, that gives you 0.111. Paki calculator. 10 minus 9, and then, square the difference, divided by the expected, which is 9. So, that gives you 0.111. O, dito, paano naman to? It's 5, which is the observed, minus 6, which is the expected, is equal to negative 1. And then you square it, divided by the expected, which is 6. So, that gives you 0.167. So, actually, these are actually smaller chi-squares. When you add up all this, that is the big chi-square. And that will determine whether the chi-square is greater than, uh, I guess, yung 1.3 natin, no? Sa iba, may mga nagsasabi, it should be, it shouldn't be greater than uh, 1.3 or it shouldn't be greater enough than 1.5. So, there are so many demarcations. Uh, like, for example, the mean squared okay, should be uh, greater than 1. Or, ah, hindi. Yung mean square na lalagpas sa 1 or lalagpas sa 1.5, that's already too big. So, that's a very noisy uh, item. Uh, so, that is a misfit. So, in order to consider whether the item is a good fit, the outfit mean squared should be less than 1.3 according to Boone. And for rating scales, it could also be uh, between 0.6 to 1.4. So, pwede pa siyang good fit. But many do not recommend a fixed cut-off. Instead, sabi nila, check all the mean squared visually. So, papaano yun? Isa sa pag-check ay paggamit nitong plot. Uh, pwede mong i-plot yung mga outfit mean square, tapos titingnan mo sino dyan yung nawawala. I mean, which one sounds or looks like an outlier. So, dito, 
yung outfit natin, wala namang lumagpas actually sa ano. Walang lumagpas sa 1.5. It's 1.5 and below. Pero, this particular item looks like an outlier. So, yan. Pwede natin siyang tingnan, i-revisit natin. Okay. Kung bakit siya misfit. Or, we can also make parallel coordinates. Sa parallel coordinates, uh, we consider the out uh, mean squared and the infit mean squared and then iko-connect natin sila and if there is a shift in the position that means that the out uh, fit mean squared corresponds with the uh, infit mean squared kapag pantay ay wala there should be a shift now uh, ito ang challenge natin the person fit paano natin malalaman kung yung tao ay fit doon sa ating model. Sino ba yung mga misfit? Of course, yung mga overachievers kasi parang they do not represent the whole sample or the, 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 the group because they're overachievers. Yung mga underachievers, ganun din. So technically, yung mga outliers, they are considered misfit. And who else? Those persons whose estimated ability level does not fit into the overall pattern. Oh, nawawala yung kanyang ability, yung yung kanyang estimated ability level ay nawawala doon sa pattern. Sino-sino yung mga taong ito? Ay, ito yung mga nangopia. Like, kailan nalalaman na may nangopia? When the less proficient a student gets the right answer than the high proficient student. Because that is very unlikely. Nasagot ng hindi magaling yung tanong, eh hindi nga nasagot ng magaling. So, uh, discarte siguro or something happened along the way. At ito pa, when the low-skilled students answer difficult items in a block of questions. Uh, when we say block of questions like uh, di ba sa mga answer sheet naka-block-block by 5 or by 10, abay na perfect nung isang estudyante na hindi naman kagalingan. So, cheating yun. No? Miss Wedding. So, anong strategy natin para Ma, ma check natin whether the person is a misfit or not. Uh, first, we have to evaluate the person fit to remove the suspicious examinee. So, yun talaga yung purpose eh. We have to remove uh, the uh, the, sus the suspected examinee. Na, Oops, ito na ngopia or something happened here. So, ang ginagamit natin na uh, criterion ay yung outfit mean squared. Yung sa out fit mean squared natin, yung yun nga, yung ating value na uh, 1.3 uh, or yeah, 1.3 pa baba. And then, next, we move from person output to the item output. So, sa item na tayo, evaluate the overall model fit by first checking the uh, uh, outfit standardized residual and second checking the infit standardized residual. So, it check natin yung mga items, draw a parallel coordinate to see whether the infit and the outfit model fit indices agree with each other. Okay. And if the model fit is satisfactory, we have to examine the item fit in the same order with the outfit first and then the infit second. So, tingnan ulit natin yung item. And then, rather than using a fixed cut-off for mean squared, we have to visualize the mean squared indices in a plot. So, kanina yung pinakita nating plot, uh, yung may pula sa taas na malayo, to detect whether any item significantly depart from the majority and also use a parallel coordinate to check the correspondence between the infit and the outfit. There is a correspondence if there is a corresponding shift no? when you compare the outfit and then the infit mean squared. Now, when misfits are found, okay, listen to this, one should check the key, the destructors, and the question content first. Do not outrightly discard or reject the item. Because according to Farish, if misfits are mechanically deleted, just based on chi-square values or standardized residuals, this improves the fit of the test as a whole but worsens the fit of the remaining item. So, yung item fit ang magaka-problema. Kaya, o nga, yung buong test mo is a fit. Kaya lang, pagdating sa mga item, they don't, uh, magaka-problema, baka mamaya uh, makikita nila that, that these items do not fit the model anymore. So, ayan. Uh, this is an example of how we interpret uh, a printout of uh, an, a write map with 
item difficulty. So these are the different items from item 1 to item 35. And these are the different difficulty estimates. They aren't arranged. These are the error estimates. This is the input mean square and this is the outfit mean square. So we usually look at the outfit mean square. Nandun tayo sa uh, 1.3 below. Nandun tayo. Okay. Between the two, no? Uh, outfit first and then the infit. And then for the standardized uh, infit residuals, at tinitignan natin yung infit T at saka yung outfit T. Ang ating uh, demarcation dyan is negative 2 to positive 2. It should be within that range. So, tingnan natin yung difficulty estimate natin. Uh, of the 35 items reflected in this table, which do you think is the most difficult? Mm -hmm. Am I correct? This is it, item number 21. Because it's uh, logit value is 2.33. At ano naman yung pinakamadali? It's item number 6, negative 2.42. So, yung sinasabi natin na because these are already equally spaced, pwede kayang ito na yung ating gamitin na pang-analyze. Like, for example, ito ay yung uh, difficulty ng bawat item. Pwede na itong ating gamitin pang-analyze ng data. I-correlate natin doon sa iba. Pwede na ito ang ating gagamitin. The error estimate. So, ano yung pinaka-precise dito? Yun, yung point 19, no? This is precise. Point 19. So, the errors are randomly distributed naman. And then the infit mean square and the outfit mean square. Let's start with the outfit mean square. It shouldn't be less than 1 point. Uh, it shouldn't be greater than 1.3. So, yung ating number 13 at number 14, they are uh, they are misfits. Ano pa? Wala. Ah, ito. Number 31, 1.55. Uh, when it comes to the infit and the outfit, tingnan natin kung meron bang ito. Kadududa yung item number 12. Pero nasa loob pa naman. Kasi to, ito, 2.6 at saka 3.4. So outfit muna tayo, 3.4. Masyadong wala ito. No, It's already on the gray uh, part of the path. And then, uh, ito naman, okay lang yung kanyang outfit, yung infit ang kanyang problema. Oh, this is the right map. What do you notice about the right map here? So, these are the students, and these are the logit values, and these are the item numbers. The most difficult item is number 21, and the easiest item is number 6. So, maganda naman yung distribution. Maganda. However, there are students that are so more, much more intelligent than the items of that that test. Sa madaling salita, uh, masyadong madali yung exam para sa mga estudyante kasi maraming mga magagaling na estudyante kaysa doon sa items na ibinigay mo. So, parang this is not a very good kind of test at all. Dapat yung magandang test, the ability of the students should match the difficulty of the items. Oh, ayan. We have three right maps here. We have right map A, right, my, right map B, and then we have right map C. So, makikita natin sa right map A, ayan, mas magagaling ba yung mga estudyante kaysa sa items? Yes. Sa right map B, okay, much much lang naman may mag, nagmamatch yung mga items doon sa mga uh, ability ng sudyante. Dito sa C, ops, kakaiba siya because mas magaling yung mga items kaysa doon sa mga estudyante. So C, by just looking at the right map, we can compare the ability of the test takers or of the examiners as compared to the difficulty of the items. Uh, now, let's review the item characteristic curves. There are three items here, item A, item B, and then we have item C. Which item here is more difficult and which item is less difficult? Uh, so, tingnan natin. Yung probability na masagot yung item is 0.5, no? 
papasa or babagsak. So, yung item 1, kayang sagutin ng mga estudyante na ang theta value or yung kanilang logit value is around 2.5 negative. So, ito yung mga mahinang estudyante. Yung item B, kayang sagutin yan ng mga average na students. Yung item, yung item C, kaya siyang uh, sagutin ng mga positive 2.5 ang logit value ng mga estudyante. So, ibig sabihin, sila yung may mataas na chance na masagot yung item C. So, ano ibig sabihin natin dito? Ang pinakamahirap na item ay C as compared to B at yung pinakamadaling item ay letter A. So, I guess that's all.